Now, our political... Based, uh, yeah, based not necessarily on social consciousness, just, I think, yeah, on the, on the fact that we, we interact with other people, whether we like it or not. I mean, that mm. forces us to be aware of... And we depend on other people's uh, input and labor and, and cooperation. Yeah. Yeah. That's um, right. Our political activists who defend the system, within the system, and those who oppose the system, actually perpetuating the capitalist system? I don't think so, at least I hope not. Mm. Um, they may be, we don't know, we don't have any certainties. Mm -hmm. But if you, if, if you have a system that is so obviously oppressive, that is so obviously killing us, then what do you do? You scream against us. You try and do something else. You try and find a way of breaking with the logic of the system. And of course you may say, well, it doesn't make any difference because in the end the, the, the system will just in, reintegrate us and, you know, we won't get anywhere. But, but I think we have to live, I mean, for me at least, we have to live with some sort of hope that we may be able to break the logic, that our, our breakings, our many, many different breakings, may actually come together and, and break the logic of the system. Yeah. No, the idea is that uh, if we are fixing the system, fixing the capitalist system all the time, uh, when uh, capitalism fails, we come and bail it out. When we're fixing it all the time, when we're trying to make it better uh, through food banks, through uh, uh, a little bit of uh, better wages for, for, for labor. Are we, in fact, enabling the capitalist system to continue uh, existing? I think it's not, for me, it's not a question of, of, of um, trying to make it better. Okay, I mean, it may make sense in certain situations, but I think what is happening more and more around the world. I mean, if you look at all the protests of the last year, if you look at Istanbul, if you look at Greece time and time again, if you look at Spain, if you look at Canada, if you look at the student strike in, in Quebec, if you look at Brazil, if you look at Sweden, if you look at Bulgaria, what you see is really that we've got a movement of protests that jumps from one country to another. And okay, they may have all sorts of particular demands, but there is one thing that people are shouting out over and over again, and that is simply that capitalism is a failure. Capitalism is a failure. Capitalism is a failure. It does not work. If we want to survive, we know perfectly well that we have to construct something else. We have to find a way of breaking with the logic. And that's, so it's not just a question of making, you know, you know, a little bit of way, more wages here and there. Of course we need better wages to, sur to, to survive, but that's not the point. The point is that the system just doesn't work. Mm. Are, you, are you saying that the struggles should be between concrete doing and abstract labor, rather than between abstract labor and capital. I think I think it's not really a question of what I say or what should happen. What, but um, I think that if we look at the move, movements against capital, there is a major shift over the last 20, 30 years. That more and more people are saying we are against labor. We are against the labor that creates capital. Mm -hmm. no. We are trying to develop a different type of activity. So I think that is a basic change in the grammar of, of anti-capitalism. People are no longer formulating it. They're not so much in terms of the struggle of labor against capital, but in terms of the struggle against labor because the way to struggle against capital is by struggling against labor. So the way to, to struggle against capital is to struggle against the logic of the activity that the system imposes upon us. 
So mm. this is always contradictory. It's always difficult. And yet it is deeply, deeply grounded in people's lives. Mm. So social change will not come from political parties or within the, the state, the, but from individual social consciousness. And maybe collective means of production outside of the monetary system. No, I don't think it's a question of individuals and social, social consciousness. It's actually collective social consciousness. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not just we will do it in our little home, in our homes. Certainly, we will do it in our homes. Yes. But has, it has we, to start with the individual. It. Hmm? Doesn't it have to start with the individual? The well, individual the, has to realize uh, that that this difference between the abstract labor, as you call, and the concrete uh, doing. If, if the person doesn't realize that, then it'll be difficult for a person to join a collective with that type of social consciousness. Well, I don't think that the individual starts as an individual. You know, we're all part of the, of the society. We're all part of the people around us. Um, and I'm not sure, and I think we have all share some sort of collective push towards... Um, thinking of society in a different way. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, part of the argument, I think, is that it, 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 we used to think that there was something exceptional about being a revolutionary. And now the argument is, no, it's actually the most obvious, normal thing in the world to see that the present system is a, is a disaster for humanity. Mm. To see that the sort of labor that is imposed upon us through money mm. is, is, does not make sense. Mm. And to look for an alternative. How could a world without money exist or function? I think a world without money could exist if we go developing different forms of organizing our activity and different forms of relating our, our activities to one another. Um, really, it's a question of taking control of the world. Isn't it? I mean, if we see that the world is completely out of control, I mean, out of anybody's control, it's not in the politicians' control, it's not not in the capitalist's control, right? It's kind of hell-bent to the logic of destruction. If we see that, then we have to say, yeah, I mean, it is our responsibility to retake the world. It is our responsibility to say the world is ours. And if we don't take it back, then, then it, disaster faces us. Taking back the world means taking back or developing forms of organization that we can control. Mm -hmm. The way of organizing the world through money or organizing social relations through money is a form of organization that we cannot control. Mm -hmm. and, and also it uh, enables people to hoard power, to hold, hoard money. So in uh, primitive uh, communities you had distribution of goods and services uh, according to need not uh, without hoarding uh, a bucket of fish because I, I want to be, uh, I want to have more than you, but how much can I eat? So it, it, it is uh, something that we probably can go back to it. I have one last question, uh, is that uh, about direct democracy. Uh, you've heard direct democracy uh, ideologies around and uh, it works through uh, initiatives of people and polls and plebiscites and referenda, would that help to change our world without taking political power? I think if we're talking about, yeah, taking the world back, assuming our responsibility for the world, mm. then that has to mean direct democracy, doesn't that? I mean, it has to mean, yes, we will collectively find ways of um, taking decisions. You know? To think of that we're all going to, trust, going to entrust the world to representatives who don't represent it. I mean, it's first of all nonsensical. We know that it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And secondly, it is actually a, a, a giving away of our own responsibility. No, our responsibility is to take, take the world. Mm -hmm. This inevitably means some form of 
direct democracy. I think not in the form of polls and plebiscites and referendums, more in the form of assemblies. I mean, this is really what has been happening. All, all the uprisings, if you think of the whole wave of, of um, uprisings over the last few years, they're characterized above all by um, assemblies and by assembly democracy. Mm -hmm. uh, they, yeah. taking, Given that we have uh, computers now, and uh, yeah. limited spaces to to put fifty thousand people and 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 try to make sense with each other in a, in an assembly, uh, I, I see the polling and plebiscites with uh, facility to uh, discuss issues a lot more practical now that we have this new technology of computers and the internet. Yeah, I think that's right. I think these, the, the new technology can can certainly play an important role. Mm -hmm. um, no, but I think the basic basic idea is should really be the the, the assembly, the, com the somehow a coming together, and preferably a physical coming together, mm -hmm. in which we listen to people yeah. and encourage them to articulate their views. We have come together, you and me. And we are not physically in the same city, so I think people could also use the internet to Absolutely. resolve issues and to <laughs> legislate their own rules rather than endorsing it to a few politicians that, rightly or wrongly, are doing what uh, the business agenda demands them to do. So I think that direct democracy could be a, a great tool for uh, changing our world, changing our our society. Well. Is there anything else that you wanted to add that I didn't include? To, to say thank you very much and to say, say that I hope very much that, that the viewers and the listeners yeah. Um, yeah, uh, and think about what we've been talking about. I Good. And hopefully the, the world will change in our lifetime. Yes. Because uh, changes are coming, but sometimes they take a hundred years or so, like uh, women's uh, right to vote, and uh, the blacks in southern states, and the Chinese here, and all those things sometimes. Changes come, but uh, they take longer than our lives. So I'm hoping that there's some change that we can see while we're alive. Yes, I hope very much that, yeah, we have to change things in our lives, because we probably can't do very much after we're dead. Mm -hmm. And if we don't well, change things, then our li the lives of our children, our grandchildren, mm -hmm. may not be all that bright. Well, your books may be read by people 50 years down the road, and maybe then the change will come. <laughs> so thank you very much, John, and uh, have a good day. No, thank you very much, Peter. Okay, bye-bye. Yeah. There are many reasons and excuses to dismiss the need for shifting from representative democracy to direct democracy. But when a significant number of us, the citizens, realize the need and the possibility of changing the political system, we will start legislating our own shadow constitution. How do we do that? One possibility as suggested on this little booklet, Perpetual Direct Democracy, published by Amazon.com, but you can also read it for free on, online on our website, pacific.ca.